I didn't realize that I was being rejected in the United States and I couldn't find work. I thought, well, maybe my popularity is waning. You don't expect anything like that to be happening in your own country. My wonderful country? That can't be happening. workers hurry to their midday meal at a posh private luncheon the city's 10 best dressed women are being named by the town's top couturier Rudy Gernrich on behalf of Batgirl, Mayor Linseed, Chief O'Hara, the entire Gotham City Police Force and myself thank you Mr. Gernrich this award just goes to prove that there is room for style even in crime fighting Ridiculous. It's Catwoman. I said ridiculous. Nonsense. Foolish prattle. How can Batgirl be the best anything when Catwoman is around? <laughs> Thursday, January 18th, I went over my guest list for the first Women Doers Luncheon. Our subject, crime on the street. My reason, because the idea has lain itching in the back of my mind a long time, and I felt I haven't raised my voice to do what little bit I could, and our guest list, a very good one, I thought. They knew about my work in America among the inner city kids. I didn't want to go because I thought it was politicians, you know, they, those luncheons, what are they going to mean? Blah, 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 and that's it. The White House kept calling me and saying, yes, Mrs. Johnson definitely wants you to come. So, okay, I go. Very happy to welcome you here to the family dining room of the White House on this beautiful day. Crime is a grim subject for a pleasant meeting like this. Now when the luncheon begins, the women were looking at the dishes underneath the plates and things to see what era of the history they came from, so forth and so on, things like that. So enthralled about the fact that they were there. Then in walks President Johnson. He puts his elbow on the pulpit that was suddenly out there, rolled into the middle of nowhere, and he starts talking about blah, blah, blah. Then he turned to leave, and Miss Eartha Kitt, who had been seated at the table close to the podium, rose in his path and said, I'm going to ask about delinquent, uh, delinquency in the United States, which we're all interested in, and that's why we're here today. But what do we do about delinquent parents? The parents who have to go to work, for instance, who can't spend the time with their children that they should. This, is, I think, is our main problem. What do we do with the children then when the parents are off working? And obviously he was not prepared to answer any kind of questions because I wanted to ask about the Social Security that we were beginning to get into knowledge about the fact that it won't be there. Da -da -da -da. Well, the Social Security bill already just passed this year. Sets up millions and millions of dollars for daycare centers where mothers can take their children if they must work. That's one step that we're taking. And uh, that comes from uh, that's approved by a bunch of men who are really not the, uh, the, uh, the best judges of uh, how to handle children otherwise. 
I think that'd be a very good question for you to ask yourself about one of you and y'all tell about you. <laughs> he sat down, stubbed out a cigarette, tossing her long hair. And from then on, I watched her, expecting something I didn't know what. Apparently, she did not eat, nor did she clap for any of the speakers. She smoldered and smoked. After the luncheon, now we're supposed to get up and take our turn to give speeches. But all of them were catering to the fact that, what do you call that word? No, phoning up to the boss, so to speak. So when I raised my hand, she kept saying, that's all right, Eartha, you will finally get your turn. I kept raising my hand. I did not know what to expect, only that it would not be good. When some speaker finished, I nodded to her. She rose and began to talk swiftly, passionately. And I said, I think we've forgotten what the subject of this luncheon is all about. And I said, one of the reasons why our boys are running away from the United States because they come to me wherever I am in the world and they tell me what they feel. The young people are angry. Their parents are angry because they are being so highly taxed. And then, mounting to a crescendo, she came to her real destination to denounce the war in Vietnam. Our position in Vietnam, they don't like it. We've been there long enough to realize we cannot win this war. So I told her what the kids had told me, the boys. That's why they smoke pot, because they just want to go to sleep until everything is all over. And then, advancing a step toward me, and looking with intense directness at me, she's a good actress, she said, you send the best of this country off to be shot and maimed. They rebel in the street. They will take part, and they will get high. They don't want to go to school, because they're going to be snatched off from their mothers to be shot in Vietnam. I'm glad to say I look back just as directly, stare for stare. She continued, pointing a finger, the paper said. Mrs. Johnson, you are a mother too, although you have had daughters and not sons. I am a mother, and I know the feeling of having a baby come out of my gut. I have a baby, and then you send him off to war. No wonder the kids rebel and take part. And Mrs. Johnson, in case you don't understand the lingo, that's marijuana. Just a minute, fat woman, you can't come here and disrupt a luncheon like this. Or my awards. Ah, but I can, gentlemen. <laughs> Some paper said I was pale and my voice trembled slightly as I replied to Miss Kitt. I think that is correct. I did not have tears in my eyes, as another paper said. Eartha Kitt made Mrs. Johnson cry. I didn't see her cry. One woman who was sitting to my right, she leaned over and whispered to me. She said, thank you, Eartha, for saying what you've said. We all feel the same way, but unfortunately, 75% of the women in this room, husbands work for President Johnson. So they couldn't say anything about what they really felt. Suddenly the meeting was over. I had a car at the, at the hotel at the White House had sent for me to come there. But then all of a sudden, now I don't have a car. So I'm walking around waiting for a car. And I had to hitchhike my way back to the hotel, so to speak. I didn't realize that I was being rejected in the United States and I couldn't find work. I thought, well, maybe my popularity is waning. Maybe that's because even the hotel ambassador, whom I had a contract with three weeks after that luncheon, couldn't find the contract all of a sudden. And neither could the William Morris Agency all of a sudden. I shall not seek, and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. phone ring just as I was 
going out the door. And he said, this is Seymour Hirsch from the New York Times. We have something that we would like you to give us permission to print. <laughs> it was from the CIA dossier. Me? On a CIA dossier? How could that possibly be? And he said, we have found a list of you on the this dossier and we have and he was reading it to me what has that got to do with the CIA if I was 